Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. <laughs> all right. All right, gotcha. Tio, we're going to we'll, we'll, we'll roll through these last three pretty quickly, all right? Um over under 1.5 years until Rick Patino has St. John's as a title contender in the Big East. A, a Big East title contender or a national championship title Big contender? Big East title contender. With well, so many teams in the league, all right. So, so with so many teams in the league, there's going to be a hodgepodge of games that are really, really close. That's when coaching comes into effect, and I'm just not going to doubt Rick Pitino. So, you're taking the under. I think it's possible they could win the league this year. It's possible. I don't think it's probable. I think it's possible. What the hell? Answer the question. What are you, you talking like, about, Fanta? You, <laughs> you sound like a politician on the stage. Answer the question that he asked. <sighs> It's over or under. When you say contender, like win it or like be in the top three or four? Like uh, head into February where they have a chance. Like what Providence was the last couple of years, what UConn was the last couple of years, what Creighton's been the last couple of years. Like we're talking not just a team that might make the tournament. We're talking like they had done the stretch run and if they win six in a row, they can win the league. Kind of a deal. This year, next year, two years from now, how long do you think it takes? Will it happen? They can be in the mix this year. Okay. So it's going to take them to contend for a Big East championship. The, the answer is the over. St. John's is going to be a good team. Could be very good team. I'm curious to see how the rotation works because they've got enough players to form an offense and a defense, an 11-man unit on each side. They've loaded up their roster. They've got more than enough weapons. And having Dennis Jenkins eligible and good to go is big. I mean, Rick Patino has said that. It's huge. Jordan Dingle's a bucket getter. RJ Lewis, I've heard nothing but good things about the way he's come in. Glenn Taylor, Simeon Wilcher, best freshman that St. John's has had in a decade. Think it's about all this. There. Think about this. N Naheem Aline. Three yeah. years, average double figures at Virginia Tech, was a key piece to UConn's national championship run off the bench last I, year. He's probably not starting for. I didn't say his name, year. right? Probably I, not I, starting this year. Not to to me, getting Chris Ledlam was huge Big. because because now Soriano has competition in practice. Now Soriano is told, "Hey, man, if you're not playing well, you'll come off the floor." I'm going to be honest on on Soriano for a moment. I like him. I think he's a good player. I also think he was a stat sheet stuffer on a team that didn't have anybody else in the front court to do that. A lot of empty so, calories there. What's that? I said a lot of empty calories in those numbers that he put up. Yeah, Empty calories? I can relate to it. <laughs> Having said that, the fact of the matter is St. John's <laughs> is a good team. They're an NCAA tournament caliber team. St. John's hasn't won an NCAA tournament game since 2000. I think that drought ends this upcoming year. I just think when you're talking about Big East championship aspirations, you're disrespecting the top teams in this league and what they have back if you're now pegging the Red Storm at number one. So I'm to answer your question, which was over under 1.5 years, the answer is over. I think a year from now, we could be talking about them as a title contender. Yep, I agree with all that. Big news. The Almanac is officially back. The most exhaustive and comprehensive guide to the 2023-24 college basketball season is available for pre-order now. If you go to cbbalmanac.com, link is in the description below, you can pre-order for just $15.99 or 20% off the sticker price. The format is going to be a little bit different this season. Instead of an 850 page PDF, you'll be getting access to the full site with league by league PDFs available for download. The preview will be live on September 20th. So you have until then to be able to get your pre-orders in. So for insight for all 362 division one teams from their head coaches and the experts that cover them, Make sure you hit that link. Uh, over under TO 2.5 years before Ed Cooley has Georgetown as a Big East contender. I'm going over because I think year three is going to be the money year. 
Uh, I just think it's going to, it's, they've been bad for so long. He has to change everything from the ground up to yes. where I think I'm not necessarily saying that St. John's has been phenomenal. I do think they're closer to being, they were closer to being good than Georgetown was over the course of the year. I think that's a foregone conclusion. I, I think over though, because this is a ground up situation. Fanta? Over. Over. I, I don't think, I think it's going to take three, maybe year three or year four until Ed Cooley has Georgetown as a Big East title contender. I think year three is is the money year. I'm with Terrence. I really do. Big East title contender. Year three. Year three. NCAA tournament level team. Could they make the tournament in Cooley's second year? Y- yes, they could. Because Here's the thing. Five, seven, eight years ago, I skipped six. I don't know why. Uh, you could, you could, you could <laughs> sit here. <laughs> Did you guys miss me? I'm, I'm just saying. There, no, no, it was you, funny. It was funny. Keep going. Yeah, you're good. You, yeah. you could say, oh, I think that two or three years from now, they're going to have it, right? Like Marquette's almost the traditional college hoops program team, whatever you want to call it, because they, they've had what roster retention no longer like that's isn't that the difficult thing with these power conference jobs and whatnot like you can't say oh it's going to take three to five years could take four or five years like no because in one off season in one off season if you've got the money now you can become an ncaa tournament team well here the one thing i would say to that is i think ed did about as good of a job as you could have asked getting this this team from like two wins in the big east in the last two years to being something where we're probably looking at like a seven or eight win team in the Big East, maybe six, somewhere in that area, right? Like they're probably the eighth best team in the conference, right? And that that um, AD should be thrilled if that's the yes. Case. And I, I think the biggest thing with Georgetown is he's going to kind of have to do what he did at Providence in terms of developing a fan base, developing a home court, getting people excited about Georgetown basketball in the city. We we don't need to rehash it again, but like finding a way to turn an NBA arena that is not anywhere near the campus and is difficult for students to get to into a home court where it's tough to play. And that's not going to be an easy thing for him to do. I think the shock of smart uh, schedule is probably something that is um, a little bit ambitious, but I think kind of if you're looking for a kind of a timeline, I think it's similar to that. All right. Last thing I got for you, you got 30 seconds to answer this question to you. If you were starting a Big East program from scratch right now and you had to pick one coach from the conference to run your program, who would it be and why? It'd be between two people. It'd be between uh, Shaka and Rick Patino. Rick's done it. I like that Shaka incorporates everything from the ground up and keeps his guys. It, it, it gives familiarity with the program. The fan base jumps on. He has them fully on board. I love what he's done at Marquette. And then Rick is just one. So it kind of depends on how soon do you want to win? That's the big question. It would be Shaka Smart for me. Yep. I I think he is a guy that gets the Big East, leads the Big East, quickly has has done that, and has built a culture. And I know that the counter argument would be, well, he hasn't had the major NCAA tournament run since VCU. Uh, But – I always use the Brad Underwood phrase and somewhere uh, sleepers media is going to roll their eyes at me or, you know, there'll be comments that, but I'm going to use daddy Brad's phrase. The key to making an NCAA tournament run is just making the NCAA tournament. I mean, you, you got to get there and then it can come. Um, and so for me, I think it's only a matter of time that Shaka smart has Marquette in the second weekend and once you get to the second weekend, guys, anything can happen from from there. They could be a final – if they're a final four team this upcoming year, you would call it as good of a three-year progression for a program that we've seen in college basketball. Shaka's relationships-oriented. He is smart. He is easy to work with. And his kids are fully bought in. I'm trying to build this program with a guy that I know – will also be loyal. And I think at this stage of his career, Shaka Smart will be loyal to Marquette. I don't think he's looking to move. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love Shaka. Love all those points that you guys made. Um, 
but I'll just push back. Like if you want to be able to win immediately and you want to be able to get a program going from the ground up, and I know you really who you're to, picking. You really want to find a way to get the answer. You got to go with Tony Stubblefield. Oh, <laughs> curveball. <laughs> no, to me, if you're Sean starting, Miller. A program, if you're start, well, yeah, Sean would be great. Love Sean. But I think if you're starting a program from the ground up, like nobody is better at just going out and figuring it out and winning right away with whatever he's got. Than Rick Patino, like yeah. you just kind of, you go with one of the goats, give him his three or four years to get the thing going, and then after he's got it going in three or four years, when he retires because he's like seventy six years old, then you go hire uh, no Hurley, a, a Sean Miller. It just it's he just take won time. a national championship, but it look I trust me I love Dan. Uh, Can't, get him, phone phone. Anymore, Can't get him on the I, phone I could, anymore, Rob. Can't get him on the phone. I finally did. The day of Finn's wedding, I got Hurley on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> right before well, I had to go spend forty dollars well, on a shot of tequila. Hur- Hur- Hurley, yeah. Hurley won a national championship. Changed his phone number. <laughs> yeah. Well, I the, he was like he was like, well, we can reschedule this. I was like, no, no, no. We got ten minutes right now, and then I got to go hit the open bar at the Fan of Wedding. And he was like, oh, okay, I got you. Um, no, I think it's I think it's Rick Patino, and then after that, you go out and. Once you got the program rolling a little bit, then you can go hire a Hurley or a Cooley or a Shaka or a Sean Miller, or whoever it is that you want. Dude, listen, you can close your eyes and throw a dart and hit one. And hit a good coach in that league. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, you know what? We didn't even mention the fact that a guy that made it to the national title game, Thad Mata, who had Ohio State is the best program in the Big Ten for a seven-year stretch. He's in this conference. Shaheen Holloway took St. Peter's to the Elite Eight literally a year ago in 2022. And we didn't even mention him. So there's a uh, underrated. The level- they underrated, are underrated. Underrated mm-hmm. going in this year. I, I, I think everybody is very down on Seton Hall. I'm not saying they're an NCAA tournament team, but I actually think that they could end up being a decent team in the Big East. They're going to be a tough out. The kid they got from Boise State's pretty good. And guy and guy, he's a good player. Yep. Um, we'll see if uh, Kadari Richmond decides to show up this season because that's going to be the key to me. Uh, anyway. This has been fun. It's been great to get back with you guys on the DTF podcast once again. Great to talk a little bit of Big East basketball. Great to talk about the Fanta wedding. John, I know it's time for you to go drown your sorrows. Uh, I don't want to hold you here any longer. So um, for Terrence Oglesby, for John Fanta, my name is Rob Doster. We'll see you guys again next week. Maybe we'll talk about the Big Ten. Who knows? We'll see. Thank you for watching the field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends or check out the description for some other places that you can consume field of 68 content.